this it's john from marco learning i want to welcome you to today's session as you're coming into the chat and if you see this afterwards let me know where you're coming from what questions you've got we're going to be answering questions here on youtube until you guys take this exam um, this afternoon i'm um, just going to make sure that i'm all set up on youtube that you guys can see me um, I'm, I'm going to have the chat open here so i can see questions um, and it's what the exams in a few hours guys we've got to um, make sure that you have all your questions answered and that you know what your strategy is going to be this is not about cramming at the last second. You can't cram for AP exams. You shouldn't cram for AP exams. You should focus on what you need. And what you need in a couple of hours is a good, clear space that you can work with. You're going to need to know that your technology is all set up. So remember, login is 30 minutes before. Your exam starts at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So that's in three hours um, <clears throat> or just under. So you're going to be logging in in two and a half hours. And like I said, I just want to make sure that we are all set on YouTube. Um, and so you need a good like setup. You need to be there 30 minutes before. You need to make sure your device is charged. My laptop that I'm on right now, I do not have plugged in. So I'm going to take a minute and situate that and get that plugged in because that is a smart thing to do. Um, I would make sure personally, I will. I decided as, as this process evolved that I wasn't going to um, that I wouldn't personally be writing on paper. If I'm typing, I'm gonna be focused on the documents I have in front of me. Um, and yeah, I see people, yes, Sebastian, you were anxiously anticipating this. Thank you for liking this video. Thank you for joining. Like I said, put your questions in the Q&A section in the chat. And then afterwards in the comment section, we're gonna to try to answer all your questions. We will stop answering questions before 2 p.m. Eastern though. Um, during the exam, you won't hear from us at Marco Learning. Um, no, no questions. Um, but until then, please let us know. So you set up your device, you set up your paper. If you're gonna have pen and paper, remember that you, you wanna make sure that your desk is clear. I have on my desk, the AP World History course and exam description from my summer workshop, um, which this is the binder version of it, but there's a digital version of this online. And I'll show you guys how to find that in just a second. It's called the CED, the course and exam description. The other thing that, and I did a session on this last night is we have a pack of free study guides that takes this giant PDF and distills it down into just a few pages. So let me show you guys how to find that. Um, and, and help yourself get set up. As you do, I want you to think, how are you submitting your, um, how are you going to be submitting your exam? Are you going to be submitting it by um, taking photos of your work, your handwritten work? Are you going to be copying and pasting? If you are, you want to make sure you understand how that process works. I'm going to also pull up the AP demo and I'll take you guys there. If you have not done that yet, you should do that between now and the exam. Um, so real quick, I'm going to uh, just make sure I have this correct here. So, uh, okay, let's go there. And I want to share my screen with you all. And I'll take you to some cool places. OK, so the first thing is let's just go to actually let me do AP World CED. <clears throat> so if you just Google AP World CED, the second document that comes up, the PDF, is this. This is the digital version of my binder, which is the official course and exam description for this year's AP exam. It's definitely a great resource. Um, for you to use during the exam, because if let's just say Buddhism is the topic of one of your documents, you can find every reference to it. Notice what I did, Command F, all the stuff. Oh, I could talk about the influence of Buddha, uh, the influence of Buddhism in East Asia as an example of cultural traditions. And this is an open book, open note exam. And this is a note, this is a book, you can use it, it is fair game. So definitely think about all the different ways that the openness of the open book, open note exam is a strategy for you. Um, if I, if my, my issue here is about missionaries, right? Let's just see, oh, there we go. The civilizing mission comes up, missionary work. This is a, a example lesson that they have in the CED. The thing that you want to remember, guys, is this. The way that the CED is set up, here's how to read this. So this is from unit one, the global tapestry, the very first uh, part of the course. The way it works is this. Everything in the blue box in the CED is fair game for them to test you on as content. Everything that's outside of the blue box is stuff that teachers can use while they're teaching. So um, this is all these illustrative examples. Like you don't have to know filial piety in East Asia, but it's a great example of a cultural tradition. Um, you don't have to know um, 
Theravada, Mahayana, and Tibetan Buddhism. But if you talk about that, that's certainly on the right track. So again, if you Google AP World CED, um, that's a really useful document. But we did something really cool. We took that giant document and we boiled it down. Here's filial piety, Buddhism, all the same stuff, but with pretty pictures in a really short review. And this is very easy to find. You just go to marcolearning.com and we'll put the link. It's actually right there in the description. Um, it's the link. Uh, yeah, this is the same link from the last video. You go to study guides, you go here down to world history, and this whole study pack is yours for free. So those are some things you can do. If you have not yet, guys, you must go here to this website. I'm gonna zoom up in on it. Um, you should go to AP 2020 exam demo, AP 2020 exam demo .college board org. If you have not yet tried this or taken an AP exam, you can just enter in nonsense. And then when, you, when you're in the program, you can see how it works. Now I'm getting some questions. Yes, thank you. I see the, the, the thing about AP stats. We are not gonna unfortunately be able to cover AP stats for the exam, but thank you for your enthusiasm. So by the way, my name is John from Marco Learning. Marco is my dog. Um, and that's why you'll see his logo on our YouTube channel here and all over our Instagram page. I'm gonna be going live on Instagram at 12 noon. Um, and I just wanna make sure, um, let's see. Yes, okay, thank you. I'm going to just, if, please don't spam the chat um, because it just kind of wrecks it for everyone else. Um, so for those of you who are joining, um, so the finding the CED guys is very simple. I'm gonna put post this in the chat for you real quick. I'm just gonna post these links and make sure that everyone's got them. Um, okay, and so real quick, I'm just gonna put these links in. So this is the course and exam description in a really easy format for you to do. You should download this and put it on your desktop, okay. Um, and this live stream will be an hour and then we're gonna post it on our channel. So that's the course and exam description. So I'll just do that again. Um, and I'll do that in the comments as well here. So people have this afterwards, there's the CED. To access our study guides, um, all you wanna do is just go to this link. Those of you who were in my live stream last night or who saw it, you know this is here. So this is our study pack. Um, again, free. Both of these documents are free. The CED um, you should have on your desktop. You should download this as well. So a um, couple of things, and I'm sorry, we don't yet have it for other subjects. We're going to be doing lives for AP World and AP Spanish this year. Um, so a, a couple of questions I'm looking at in the chat. Um, yes, there is a really great series um, on, on antisocial sites. So I want to show you real quick our playlist for this as well, where we took some of her videos and some of the videos she, uh, that Emily made with us from, from that channel. Um, and I wanna take you guys to this um, as well. So here's here's a really good place to go after this live stream's over, um, is we have Emily Glankler from Antisocial Studies did a video on walking through the whole thing. She and I did a video on the rubric and then look each point, point by point. I have a short video on open book exams, all of Emily's great content on antisocial studies, um, as well as cram sessions, everything. And then also some issues, everything about getting ready, getting your space ready, tech problems, and overcoming test anxiety, all in one mega playlist right here on our channel. So definitely subscribe and pay attention to that. And if you like what you're seeing in this video, press that like button and let me know um, how uh, this is all working. Okay. So one of the questions that um, I'm seeing here in the chat is what, do, what should we do if we get a topic or prompt we don't know much about? And that's a really important question and very, um, it, it gets to something fundamental about AP world history that's different from AP Euro and AP, AP US history. So I'm a historian, I'm a medieval historian by training. So the first couple units of the world history curriculum I'm really interested in and I know a lot about. Other parts of this curriculum, I don't know. So even somebody like me, I have a couple of graduate degrees in history. There's stuff about the Song Dynasty and stuff about modern um, uh, Australia that like, I don't know. And if you gave me the documents uh, for that thing, I wouldn't have a lot of outside knowledge, but that's not what this test is testing, right? The test is testing your ability to respond to the prompt that they give you and the documents they give you. And the way to think about the documents is this, they've sort of rigged the documents to inspire something in you, something about one of the themes from this course, something that you learned in your class, something that connects to the theme of trade or humans in the environment. I wanna show you guys a thematic approach to this. This was something that was really interesting for me when I was at the, um, I went to the AP annual conference in Orlando last fall. 
um, last summer. And it was really interesting because I heard from a teacher who was talking about how he teaches his class only thematically, not chronologically. Let me show you what I, what I mean. So again, the course and exam description we have, I posted in the chat earlier. These are the six themes that link every piece of information, every document, every DBQ in AP World History, right out of the official curriculum. The first theme, theme one, is humans and the environment. The environment shapes human societies as populations grow and change. These populations, in turn, shape their environments. What do you think is a good example of this theme from the official course and exam description? Humans and the environment. Go ahead and put that in the chat. Um, and let's see. I just want to make sure. Um, yeah, and a couple of things real quick. I'm just, as, as you're um, thinking of examples, and I want you to type examples from world history of humans and the environment, how the environment shapes humans and how humans shape the environment. I'm just looking at a couple of these um, questions and comments here. Great. So, and just to clarify one little question that's emerged a discussion is that contextualization is best outside normally before the time period, sometimes after. That goes normally in the first paragraph, three full sentences, that sets up the whole story of your DBQ. Outside evidence should be within the time frame that they've given you, but not from the documents. That's how it, it kind of works. It's, it's contextualizations before, after in, in the vast majority of cases, and um, outside evidence is within that time frame. Context for a document, if you're sourcing a document, you're hipping a document, will be a, a local to that document, specific to that document. Um, okay, so let's see. We have terrace farming, people responding to mountainous environments. We have um, the bubonic plague. Uh, Europe faced with deforestation and erosion, right? So like what happens when human beings industrialize their environment? that changes the environment, which in turn changes how an industry is made. Bu bu the bubonic plague in agriculture, um, let's see, um, make sure if I have this, all, the Colombian exchange, Colombian exchange moves, people move, and then diseases move with them. That's actually the whole history of, of humankind, and it's what we're living through right now, guys, humans and the environment. We have a, a global pandemic because we move so much. And by stopping human movement, we've made an effort to stop the transmission of the disease, to stop death and, and uh, destruction. Um, and, but in back in olden times, they didn't understand this. Um, and they also, but they also didn't move quite as much. That's why the, the spread of the Black Death, which was so fatal, so deadly for people, um, was still slower than the movement of pandemics today. Um, so uh, let's see. The, Yes, the, a lot of people, and Sebastian is recommending, um, and sorry, let me just turn that off. Sebastian is recommending um, that you use our study packs. Again, those are here. If you just go to Marco Learning, go to the study guides page. We have the link in the description there for you. That's another really useful resource. But so coming back to these themes, one of the themes, um, and I'm just going to get rid of the demo that I had up here. One of the themes that we're looking at is humans in the environment. If you're talking about this theme, humans in the environment, as you respond to your documents, you're talking about the right thing. Theme two, cultural developments and interactions, CDI. The theme, or this says the development of ideas, beliefs, and religions illustrates how groups in society view themselves and the interactions of societies and their beliefs often have political social and cultural implications. This is really vague, but what's a good example of cultural developments and interactions, how the development of ideas, beliefs, and religions will affect how groups in society view themselves and how there are these implications for it. So what would just be an example? Let's just take the narrow issue of how people view themselves in society. What's an example of how religion affects how people view them, views themselves um, view themselves in society. Yes, and I'm just taking a look at, um, yes, I'm looking at these great examples you guys came up with. Um, the spread of Dar al-Islam, that's a great example. Islam is, as a religion, was something that had to cover a wide range of territory. And to this day, the, that Muslims in Morocco and Muslims in Saudi Arabia and Muslims in Indonesia practice local different cultural traditions. Um, you have Shia and Sunni differences. 
That material is also in the CED, and it's a great example of how this theme works out. The Dar al Islam, the Islamic world, um, is diverse and complicated with many languages and cultural traditions. Um, and when Islamic and Christian societies conquered each other, um, that's what I studied actually in the history of medieval Spain. You have Muslims, Christians, and Jews living together in the Iberian Peninsula. And when Christians were in control, it set up a hierarchy where Christians were at the top and Jews and Muslims were underneath. And when Muslims were in control the, of Spain, and remember Muslim, the Muslim presence in Spain was something like 800 years from the conquest in 711 until 1492. We have eight consecutive centuries of Muslims living in Spain, interacting in these social hierarchies that show how religion and ideas and beliefs structure all of this. Um, so let's see, um, I've got some great, uh, the caste system I think is a perfect example of this. And here's what I mean guys about the CED. If you download this document, right? You do command F and I do caste system. Um, oh, there we go. Caste reservation in India as an example of this. And I look at the, the topic. Um, oh, there's only the one example. Okay. So actually it's not a vital part of the, the course, but I can, it definitely is going to take me to areas. And if I don't have this, I could also just do Hinduism and see what's here. Right. Okay. They continue to shape societies. I look at what the topic and time frame is that can help me move really quickly. Um, so again, the, that's the entire course and exam description. We have on the link in our description, the study guides that you can use um, right here that get it down to 13 pages. And definitely on her, her uh, page as well on antisocial studies, Emily Glankler has some amazing materials. So, okay, one thing I want to do real quick, I'm just going to go back to where I was with the themes. This is one thing about this. Um, uh, document that is a little bit confusing. If you're not using Command F, see how much junk is in here that you don't need. That's why a distilled version can be really, really helpful. Um, okay, so let me just get to, so there's all these gr grids and charts and breakdowns of things. Let's get back to our themes here. Um, so we talked about humans in the environment, cultural developments and interactions, Neo-Confucianism, the, um, the mandate of heaven, so many um, great things. So, and that's the question that Amanda's asking is, could we have the CED open during the test? I think you can, but this is something that's so important, guys. Please, 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 whatever you're doing, do not like copy and paste chunks of the CED into your essay. That is very silly. Do not get lost in 20 minutes of going around and like finding stuff online. You have five documents in front of you, use at least three of them, and maybe all five, you're gonna go for all 10 points. Use at least three of those documents in front of you to let and let that govern your plan. Let that structure your approach, not rummaging around for outside stuff. I can't tell you guys how many people coming out of AP Euro and AP World, AP uh, US History, told us last week, man, I spent way too much time going around looking stuff up. I only had 45 minutes. I had no idea how little time I had. I want you to go into this exam, guys. Super excited, not nervous, but super excited about like, going after the 45 minutes you have in front of you. That's that's the most important thing. I've been a test prep teacher and tutor for almost 20 years. I worked for many years at the Princeton Review. I founded Marco Learning to help AP students like you guys get ready. And one of the things that is really critical to a great approach to an exam is timing. That's like the first and last thing that tutors do is we, got, we watch our students take their exams, we look at their results and we say, wait a second, you spent way too much time on this part reallocate your timing and then surprise people's scores go up so when i tutored for the sat for many years like people's scores like half of the score improvements i would get were just people fixing their timing half of the score improvement you could possibly make in the next few hours is you having a better attitude about your time don't get too lost in all these things and some of you are super um some of you are super <laughs> um Yes, we're definitely happy here to help all of you. Um, you're, I know your anxiety is peaking. A couple things real quick. I have a video on overcoming test anxiety. It's like two minutes and 30 seconds long on this channel. It's actually in, I think I put it in this playlist here. So in the world history playlist, if you go to the bottom, overcoming anxiety and there's my face like, hey, you'll be fine. And I make just a quick point that like, if you go into this exam saying, I need to be perfect and I can't make any mistakes. And my teacher told me this and, and I've got getting all this advice. It will mess with your head. Just focus on the task at hand. You're going to get each one of these points one by one. 
let's keep working through this thematic approach because I think this is really useful. Th theme three, definitely something that you should be talking about as you connect documents, no matter where they're coming from, is governance. And here's what it says about governance. Governance means this, a variety of internal and external factors contribute to state formation, expansion, and decline. So lots of things makes, make empires and states, governments, grow and shrink, and whatever. Governments maintain order through a variety of administrative institutions, policies, procedures, and governments obtain, retain, and exercise power in different ways and for different purposes. This is so vague, but look, how do governments grow, succeed, expand, succeed some more, fail, shrink, decline, and completely implode? How, that's the whole history of the world is the growing up and, 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 and shrinking down of empires, of countries. What makes a country go into decline? What makes it succeed? And so I want you guys to think of some examples you feel really comfortable with about governance, about the growing or decline of a state that you might be able to talk about. And all you who are scared, you're gonna be fine. Um, and in fact, is there an emoji option in the chat? Give me some smiley emojis and happy emojis for how everyone's feeling. I've got several hundred people in the room. If you like what you're seeing in this review, press that like button and definitely let me know what, how I can help you guys. Vibes all around people, good vibes only in this chat because that's the only thing we can do at this point. You're not gonna learn all the history of the world. Um, so civil service exams, guys, this is a great thing about, um, you know, Confucian styles of, of government in China, um, tribute systems, the, per, the Safavid empire setting up its road networks and governance structures, um, the divine rights of kings. How do you get, how do I claim legitimacy? I was elected in an election. How do I claim legitimacy? Legitimacy, God put me in power. Um, the gods put me in power. Um, I am the best person for the job. I'm seeing a whole string of super happy emojis. That's making me smile. Um, and I don't know, I think that's super helpful and, and encouraging. So great. And I love, there's a lot of dabbing. There's a lot of, there's a couple of sick people. Um, creating a centralized bureaucracy. Um, that's really important. So again, bureaucracy is about mail systems and roads and police forces and military structures. It's about the justification for things. Okay, good. <laughs> um, so yeah, a little, okay, good, great. I really love what I'm seeing in the chat mostly. Okay, um, so as we think of governance, it's with specific ways that empires grow. You can think of the Inca empire and its road system. Um, and you can think of the Roman empire, or actually roads, by the way, guys, true story. Roads are a really big deal in history um, because there are ways that you can move people through um, your uh, through your empire. Uh, just one example from the 20th century, which won't be on your exam, is when um, the American generals and Dwight Eisenhower were at um, were in Nazi Germany, and they saw the autobahn and how impressive it was that Hitler could move his troops from one side of the country to the other. That inspired them to set up, in part, the American interstate highway system, the one where like you get on I-95 and you drive somewhere. That comes from the effectiveness of the Nazi regime inspiring American um, road systems. And the same thing happens in the ancient Roman Empire and other places people are saying, oh, right, this is a really effective way of moving people and goods and water around. Another theme, the fourth theme of the official course and exam description here is economic systems. So it says, as societies develop, they affect and are affected by the ways that they produce, exchange, and consume goods and services. As societies develop, they affect and are affected by. So what are some great examples of this? And by the way, I just want to say something about the zero to 10 scale, converting to one to five. We won't know until after the exam. So don't worry about that. Focus on getting the number of points that you believe that you can get. Um, we do not know. Um, we do not know what's, uh, what's going to convert there. So canal systems, and, and tell me about economic systems and how they affect and are affected by what are some good examples. Um, great, and I really see some great comments. This is, and by the way, where I'm getting this is from the official course and exam description. Um, and I posted the link earlier in the chat and I put it in comments as well. Um, so taxes, the rise of capitalism, mercantilism, these are the economic systems that structure the world. Silk roads, right? Overland routes of moving people 
uh, in caravans or um, in, um, you know, there's all these little places where merchants would stop along the way and secure their goods. This matters because where merchants move, that's how diseases move. That's how people move. That's how all these things take place. And for those of you joining, again, real quick, uh, to find the course and exam description, you just Google AP World CED, and you'll get a digital copy of this. This is the official course and exam description. You can have this open on an open book, open note exam, and you can just have it downloaded to your desktop. It's a bit of a behemoth. So what we did at Marker Learning is, and you can see this, it's right here in our website. If you can't find the link, it's just right on the main page. You go to study guides, and on study guides, you will see the World History Study Guide, and you can download this for free and have it with you during the open book, open note exam. It's every unit in two pages each. And remember that the units stop for this year at 1900. There are no units seven, eight, and nine on this exam because of the uh, COVID-19 situation because of where we are. So let's just take a look. Um, Laissez-faire, which is a great example of a literally let, let them be uh, capitalism. It's unchecked capitalism as an economic system. Um, let's just see crop farming, um, yes, and Sebastian makes a really great point that I've been making in these live streams as well. You are not writing a masterpiece of English prose, guys. You don't need to worry about grammar and spelling. You don't need to worry about having a hook or having a great conclusion. You don't get points for that. You also don't get deducted points. This is graded on something called positive scoring. And positive scoring means you can only add points one by one. You can't get them deducted. Um, so that's a really important aspect of this whole um, uh, exam is the nature of the essay that you're writing. Um, and so I really want to encourage you. Um, uh, hold on one second. I really want to encourage you all to, to focus on not getting the best um, the best possible essay that you can write, but focus on an essay that that actually is um, getting all the points you need. And actually to that end, I wanna show you something real quick. Um, I'm gonna pull up a document that I think could really help you see the strategy, which I reviewed in yesterday's live on this channel, which is another document that's on our uh, page here. So uh, you just go here right below the AP World History Study Pack is this, this is our practice guide. So you can see that, um, we break down the old versus the new format and we talk about this strategy. And just briefly, again, all the points are each, they're each may equal, they each count for one. And yet the points individually are um, harder to get than other ones, right? So the contextualization, for example, is three or four sentences at the beginning of that first paragraph, usually that sets up your argument. That point is a lot harder, it takes, it takes more work to get and it's harder to get than the thesis point, which is easier and shorter, it should be the end of the first paragraph. Um, you have describing two documents um, and then connecting those two documents counts just as much for two points as all the work of adding in two more. And so we've shown you three different ways to approach this exam and not everyone, there's almost 400 people who are here with me right now should be focused on the 10 points. Um, you know, if you go in focusing on 10 points, you could end up making a mistake. It's just basic game theory, guys. If you go after the absolute best thing, you might not, you might not get it. But if you go after something you can get, you have a better shot. Like a lot of people who go after the absolute best thing end up making so many timing mistakes, they get five out of 10, rather than just aiming for seven out of 10, which they could get. So a lot of these people, yeah, and let me just say this guys too, like for a second, let's step away from all these guides and everything. Um, if you're super nervous right now, I want you to remember something. The exam has changed, people's computers are blowing up, people are freaking out, but you know what? The content of this course did not change overnight. The skills of the DBQ did not change. The format actually gives you some advantages. Like let's focus on the bright side. Like the fact that people can type their AP exams this year gives you a chance if you're gonna type to move stuff around. Um, personally, I love that. I always felt like during a three hour exam, my hand was falling off. Speaking of a three hour exam, a three hour exam is torture. The, by the time you get to the DBQ, you would have already been through an hour of multiple choice all the short answer questions. You gotta do the DBQ and keep your hand and mind fresh for the LEQ. So you guys have a huge advantage in spite of all the things, and I've complained loudly about some of the things going on, but like in spite of all the bad things, this is a shorter exam with, with a technological resources. It's open book, open note. 
Um, so, you know, for AP World students, you're not going to have this opportunity again. So seize the day, trust your own instincts as a reader, as a historian. No, guys, I'm a historian by training. I have like published historical research and academic journals in English and in Spanish. And I can tell you this, everyone's a historian. Everyone reads sources and listens to stories. Everyone tells stories. So you are historians. Trust your historical voice to get through this. It'll be fine. Um, so all this um, scariness in the chat, we're all just going to go, we're just going to clear our minds and focus on the skills and content we've been learning all year and making sure we set ourselves up for success on test day. Now, one of the things I've been talking about in this live stream, and thank you guys, those of you who are just joining, I'm seeing all the love and all the likes. Thank you for liking this video uh, and for joining us here at Marco Learning. As I said earlier, we've got a whole playlist on our channel that covers stuff on Emily Glankler's channel and stuff we put out, we did a walk through every point of the rubric and how to get them, how to use open book and open notes exams. And crucially, this video down here at the bottom on overcoming some test anxiety, dealing with tech problems. These are nice short videos. You can watch when we're all done. Now, coming back to the CED, the course and exam description, the official curriculum for AP World. One of the ways to think about this course is it's a very thematic course. We talked earlier about humans and the environment. We talked about um, so how the environment makes humans act in a different way and humans change the environment, how cultural developments create class structures and change societies and, and belief systems merge and evolve, how empires and governments are run, how you govern your government matters for how society ends up working. We've also talked about economic systems, mercantilism, which was what allowed for the creation of these empires in the in this 15 and 1600s um, and their sustaining uh, characteristics, which later we focus on a uh, laissez-faire capitalism, a kind of industrial capitalism that creates new wealth and new inequalities. Theme five is social interactions and organization. This is what my training in it is as a historian. I love this theme. Um, it's social uh, dynamics. I, I wasn't a government person per se. Some historians focus on, on this. I focused on social interactions, the process by which societies group their members and the norms that govern the interactions between these groups and between individuals influence political, economic, and cultural institutions and organizations. So take a minute in the chat, guys, and tell me about what social interactions you've learned about in class that you can talk about during your um, exam. So let's see. We've got the floor gang. Great, wonderful. Thank you, Physics Insider Guy. Um, let me know examples of what they're talking about here with social interactions and uh, organization. And again, I want to well, yeah, Bryce, thank you. This is great. Um, we're happy to help you here at Marco Learning. Thank you guys for liking this video, for subscribing. Um, and let me know about what specifically social interactions. So the caste system is another great example of this. Um, the, uh, we're looking at social interactions and organization, the hacienda system and the encomienda system, like as ways of structuring the Latin American example is really powerful, right? When you have the, the, all of those diagrams of social hierarchies in Latin America are very powerful, right? Criollos, mestizos, all the different groups, um, of, of people that emerge in this racial, ethnic, uh, religious social hierarchy. Um, some people are talking about, uh, yeah, so feudalism as a way of lords and vassals and uh, serfs in a medieval European structure. That's some of the stuff that I studied. Um, the transatlantic slave trade, which creates new racial hierarchies in the, in the Americas. Even the whole ideology of race, like there are these different, like, and making hierarchies is something that is part mostly invented to, to oppress people and is something that defines social organizations. You could also talk about gender here, right? That separating men and women in public spaces, male headship in marriage over women, um, male um, property rights over women, men get to vote and women don't. Those dynamics of gender, that's some of the stuff that I studied as well for medieval Spain was the dynamics of men and women, children. When does childhood end? When what is a child labor law worth? What specialness of uh, uh, of, of children childhood is there? That's not really in the CED, but those are the sorts of things that would be relevant to this theme, not to necessarily details. Um, we have Champa and social Darwinism, exactly Japanese feudal structures, 
all of this is great. Filial piety, that, that, that's a great example of how children appear in the course and exam description. The submission of children to parents in China um, as part of a Confucian, Neo-Confucian system is very, very powerful. New classes, foot binding, that what a great example of um, how women are marked separate and, and really literally cut off from opportunities. Um, and diaspora, the, the creation of, of dimmi communities in the Islamic world or um, the history of Jews all around the world is the history of diasporic communities sticking together. Those social interactions are part of this theme. Um, another example is technology and innovation. Um, and by the way, one of the things we did in, this, in these study guides is we connected this around themes. So let me just show you real quick. This study guide pack, which we have the link in our description, just go to marcolearning.com. You can also just go to our, if you forget the link, just go to our page, click on study guides. It'll take you here. You get this. This is completely free. You can have this open on open book, open note exam. We do this around themes um, about the expansion of state. You can see it right in the, in the titles, right? Um, societal change around economic development. So it's a, it's a thematic guide through really quickly going through each of the units in two pages. Um, so again, where we are looking right now is in the course and exam description. Um, <clears throat> And the course and exam description is the official curriculum for AP World. It's uh, the binders your teachers have had on their desks all year back when we were in our buildings and on desks. And that is um, the final theme is technology and innovation. Human adaptation and innovation have resulted in increased efficiency, comfort, and security. And technological advances have shaped human development and interactions with both intended and unintended consequences. So guys, what are some good examples of this, of technology and innovation that you could talk about in your, um, in your essay. So take a minute and let me know what you all think of examples that we could use for technology and innovation. And I'm gonna take a look. Yes, and we just posted the link there to the free study guides. The Latin sail, the steam engine, railroads, spinning jenny, gunpowder. Guys, you're smart. You, uh, everything you're saying is correct. And this is what I'm saying to you all. It's like, just trust your own instinct. I throw out a question and I get nothing but correct answers here. Now I know some are gonna be tempted to put like nonsense answers in, but like, this is what this is. This is what this means. The world history exam is structured for you to take the things that you learned, not what other people learned, not what I'm teaching you, not what you're seeing online, but the things that you learned and to trust them. Bessemer steel, all this, look at all you wonderful, smart people filling up my chat here on Marco Learning with um, all of this incredible stuff. So really, really great. Um, and please don't spam the chat, thanks. Um, I think we're good. Yeah, the, the Zhao boats, ma ma maritime empires, the, the ability, you know, you can think of even um, the steam engine was, is one of the most powerful explanatory factors for why Europeans were able to eventually colonize Africa in the 19th century, because the steam engine let them go up rivers go upstream. Uh, quinine, right, which allowed them to survive malaria was another technology that enabled colonialism. Colonialism is explained through guns and boats and uh, quinine and a variety of different things. So it's great. Um, and I'm just going to real quick um, just get rid of some of these. Great. And you guys are smart. Um, definitely give me, uh, we're going to do it again just because it was so much fun. Guys, put an emoji in for feeling great about the AP exam because you know what? Blah, blah, blah. You're not going to dramatically change your score in the next few minutes. You're going to change your frame of mind. And your frame of mind is this. You are a historian. You are a high school student. You're not writing a perfect final essay. You're not writing something for publication. You are earning points on a standardized test by trusting yourself. So you cleared your mind. You clear your desk, you clear your desktop. You focus on the things that you want to have nearby. Maybe two resources. I'm recommending two. One is the course and exam description. Just Google AP World CED, you'll find it. The other, and we put the links in, in the description, is to get our study pack of notes that take everything that you possibly need to know and boil it down into two page guides. Um, and if you've got this nearby, you can just Google. If I'm looking at Buddhism, I can just command F Buddhism. 
and find every example here. And I just did B-U-D-D -D, and that, that helped me move very quickly through this. We've got the link to this in the chat. And I see a bunch of emojis coming in um, and uh, happiness, good. Um, thank you guys so much for donuts. Yeah, definitely make sure you have a nice little snack. One thing, well, I do a lot to help students on this channel and for many years as a test prep person in like focusing on like the longevity of the exam. It's three hours and 10 minutes and you have to like make sure you have a good snack and you have to do all this stuff. You don't, right? This is a much easier project now with it, now that it's only 45 minutes. Um, okay, great. So a couple of things real quick that I want to do is, um, yeah, and the page, by the way, if you click on our study guides, uh, the link in our description on this video, or you just go to marcolearning.com, it's very easy to find from there, these, these study guides. So by the way, my, um, and is anyone having problems downloading that? Go ahead and try that out. I'll just show you guys real quick how I, how I can do it pretty easily. So this is the main page. I go to study guides. And if you go down to study guides, you'll see the AP world one, you click on this, it will take you here. Um, so a couple things about this year's exam that are important. Remember, you need to log in 30 minutes before. Remember that you need to um, make sure that if your browser's out of date, that you refresh that. If you're going to be taking photos of handwritten work, please, please update your photos from HEIC format to regular JPEG format. If you don't know how to do that, we have a post on our Instagram page all about this. I'm gonna be going live on Instagram in about 10 minutes. So you guys can join me. I'm bring some students on and we can, you can come in live, but I'll show you real quick on our Instagram page how to do this because um, you do not wanna have problems uploading your photos. So here's some of the, all this goofy stuff, me dressed up like a clown, you're welcome. Um, okay, so where is that HEIC post? Um, I think it was, oh my goodness, there's so much. And, and we actually show you how to get the study guides and all of that here as well. This is my dog, Marco, for those of you who are asking. Marco is my dog, not me. I'm John from Marco Learning. Um, and um, let's see, where was that? Oh, wait, hang on. We had it here somewhere. The I probably am just going by it multiple times. Oh, here it is. Okay. So this is how you convert your photos. You go to your settings and click on camera. You click on formats, takes you to camera capture, and you go to most compatible. Um, and that's another thing that you can do to make sure you're set up. Make sure you have your charger set up. So, um, and if you're, if you, uh, yeah, the first link in the description, guys, for all of this looks like, um, yeah, Amina is asking, is it a good idea to have study notes in a timeline? I think that that could be a really good idea. The important thing, Amina, and for all of you, uh, is this. You do you, right? Don't do what I'm saying. If this study pack is like too new and not something that's helpful, don't use it. If the course and exam description, if it's just gonna make you stressed, don't do it. You gotta focus on what's gonna help you maximize the points. And, and a couple of other things is when you get into the exam, think strategically about not reading carefully through each line of the document. This is an AP English language. Think about reading past the documents, read the headers and ask yourself like, why did they put this here? What are they going for? Oh, they're going for filial piety. Oh, they're going for the Inca road system. Of course, the Latin sale. Um, they're giving me something <clears throat> that's like egging me on to talk about a theme, terrace farming, humans in the environment, a map about the Safavid empire, that all those things are like plants. They're planted for you to respond to, so respond to them. And that's gonna give you some confidence that like, you don't need to know the history of the world you for world history. You don't need to know everything. You need to be able to take what they give you and respond to it. Also remember this guys, you can earn eight or nine out of the 10 points by only successfully using two documents. I'm gonna repeat that sentence. You can earn eight or nine of the 10 points of this rubric only using successfully two documents. Um, let me, um, real quick, let's see, yes, and the login, but yes, and, okay, and let me know, is anyone able to get into our website and log in? Um, I just want to make sure that that's working. Um, it doesn't let you, okay, um, we'll make sure that we get that there. And is anyone been able to find that those study guides? Has that been able to work? 
um, definitely click on that link and try it. Um, and I know some of you are, <laughs> um, yeah, you could, this is for logging in. You can only log into the, the program at 1.30 p.m. Um, and okay, let's see. Yes, I know some people got their um, things and just let me know if, if we're having any issues, you are able to get in. Um, okay, good. Okay, a lot of people are able to get in, wonderful. Um, couple of other things. I wanna thank you all, um, just really, just personally from me, from everyone at Marco Learning. You guys, a lot of people, some of you are just discovering us now, but a lot of people have been uh, very encouraging and supportive and have liked this video, have liked our channel, subscribed to them. Um, and it's been really, really just helpful for everyone. We've been working really hard to get you guys as much great stuff as we can. One of the things we did over the last couple of weeks is we put together a playlist. Some of these videos are really long before the exam, but some are short. We talk about how to use open book open note exams. Um, we go through the rubric point by point. Um, and we also talk about tech problems, getting your space ready and overcoming anxiety. This is probably a good video to watch because a lot of people are super nervous. So again, I want to encourage you. This is not about getting every last little thing sorted out before the exam. It's not a matter of um, it's not a matter of learning a lot of things. You're not going to do that. You don't need to. It's an open book exam. It's about learning to trust your own voice, learning to follow a strategy where you get the easiest points first. You only go after the right number of documents. You can leave a couple documents to the side and score very highly. And um, I want you guys to do well. So in a few minutes, I'm gonna be going live on our Instagram channel. Before I do, I'm gonna hop in and just check any more questions in the chat to make sure that you guys uh, know what you need to know before this exam is here. So a couple, okay, Marxism is covered in our study guide. So I'm not gonna go over that specifically, but thank you. Um, yeah, so let's see real quick. Some of you, by the way, one of the nice, um, so, yeah, who gave the one, they've got two dislikes now. So I need some help getting a better ratio. So like this video, help, help a brother out um, because yes, and fives in the chat, for everyone who's going to be getting fives today, um, maybe five out of 10, maybe one out of, uh, you know, five out of five, we'll see. Um, so yeah, you guys, and I want, I want to close this chat out with good vibes only emojis from everyone who's here because you're going to do amazing. We have a video in our playlist for outside evidence for all these things. And Natalie's saying, take a deep breath, do your best and take the test. Amen, Natalie, what great advice. So, um, so many great, <laughs> so much, yeah, I've got all those fives coming in in the chat. So, so wonderful to see. Um, and really, again, you guys have been an amazing group. Um, yeah, I see I've got the, dis we've got now a war between the likes and the dislikes. Uh, maybe we can convert a couple of those dislikes to likes. And, and again, I, I really, it's, don't worry about the little details at this point, um, you guys can do this. Um, and I really, really um, hope that the videos on our playlist and the resources we have on our page are gonna be helpful for you. Again, I'll show you one last time that if you go to marcolearning.com, we have a link in the description, you'll see the free study guides page. There's this guide here, which is the world history study pack. It's yours for free. You can have it open during this open book, open note exam. The other thing is if you're on the same page, you can see the free practice guide. This practice guide breaks down the strategies that you can use for the exam. So really useful ways to just remind you what to do. One thing that we also have here at the end is kind of a, a pre-writing worksheet where, and, and if you have never used this before, don't, don't add this into the mix at this point, but it's here for you if you have used this in other courses, other uh, ways of, of helping you get ready. So again, this is at our website. We've got the link in the description, link in the chat. You guys are amazing. Best of luck on this exam. And if you want to chat with me some more, join me on my Instagram live at Marco Learning. I'm going to be going live in just a few minutes at 12 noon Eastern. Good luck on this year's exam, everyone.